This is Tom Asper with the Viper Report with an intro to Sunday's market wrap video, which will follow very shortly. Uh, hope you started off the year on a good note. Um, I hope you've been looking at some of my recent videos uh, pretty much for the last couple of months. I've been not as bearish as most on Wall Street. If you look at some of my writings on Forbes.com, if you want to find them, just Forbes colon Tom Asprey. Uh, like last weekend, our Wall Street strategy is too negative. Um, the first week of the new year, I thought that was really significant um, and was very bullish for the market. And therefore, we, we were buying before that uh, strong jobs report. In today's video, I lay out the bullish case and think it's unlikely that we will drop back to the lows we saw in 2022. And that, as was the case in 2017, the market will surprise most strategists on the upside. So I hope you'll join us as a, uh, a satisfied subscriber. If you go to the Viper Report, go to Viper ETF Report for ETF advice for traders and investors or for stock traders, uh, go to the Viper Hot Stocks Report. Um, that'll give you uh, our scan results and specific entry and exit price levels. As this chart indicates, did a great job of navigating the, the summer rally. Made some nice profits on that. That got back on the short side in August when everyone was just starting to think the, the market had bottomed. Uh, we thought it was going to correct further, and it did. You probably have seen many of the videos. You can go to the Viper Report YouTube channel here, and you can see some of uh, my recent commentaries, show you the, t the reasons behind my positive aspect, and the methods that I use to find the best stocks that are outperforming the market. So I hope you come and join us, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please share any feedback you may have to Tom at Viper Report. Good afternoon. This is Tom Asprey with the Viper Report. Run a little late today, so we'll update will be a little shorter than normal. This is the Viper Market Wrap for the week ending January 20th. This week is another one that Please both the bulls and the bears, mostly the bears, as I think we dropped 300 points in the Dow maybe in the last hour. Uh, I think I tweeted the the advanced decline numbers were not really that bad two hours before the close, and then closed two to one negative. Actually, the price decline was much more severe than the market internals. Uh, nevertheless, it was the uh, you know two percent plus decline I was looking for last week in my Forbes column, and uh, the way we close suggests that it was just a pullback in an uptrend. Let's look at some charts. The most positive action last week was in the NYSE composite, a, a broad measure of the market. You can see we pulled back. This is Wednesday, Thursday, Doji hit the rising 20 week EMA. Just a minor pullback in the AD numbers. The uh, S&P and QQQs actually dropped below their moving averages on a daily basis uh, with Thursday's close, but quickly reversed to the upside. And now the NYSC has moved above this downtrend and already made a new high. Uh, we need to see some confirmation on the upside, but this suggested it's starting to lead the market, which is a good sign. All of the weekly AD lines are still positive. You can see we had a slightly lower close, but uh, rebounded pretty nicely from a low that was identified by the hourly charts. AD line was down a little bit on the S&P, but still in a positive trend. With a higher close this week, of course, it's a big earnings week, it would look quite strong. It was a week where tech led the way up and a growth as well, we'll get into a little bit, but uh, you can see that the overall trend in the Qs is still not that great. We're still below the major drown trend line A, which is currently around 282, you know, we could break that this week with not much problem. AD line is just holding barely above, you know, its moving average, like by about 10 issues. Relative performance still indicates that the Qs are lagging uh, the S&P. One market I think will help the overall stock market move higher is crude oil. Pretty strong action. You can see in the OBV and crude oil. This is a daily chart of the futures, you know, suggesting we're going to get back, you know, to that 85 area and uh, possibly higher. 
Um, Herrick payoff index is above the zero line. It's also broken through resistance. So those are both favoring of higher crude oil prices, which will give a boost to that sector of the stock market. While we're doing commodities, let's we'll take a look at the gold futures. Still pretty positive. OBV is in a solid uptrend. This is a daily basis. HPI not made a new high since uh, November, but is positive well above the zero line here. So if it were to drop below its moving average, that'd be more of a concern. No signs of that yet. Looking at the daily AD lines, you can see the SPY came down in to went below the pivot, which was uh, which is at two uh, 388.60. I think we had a low of 387.26 or so and then closed strong. So the R1 is at 402. This is the adjusted high from December, which is like 408. And then the R2 is at 422. I think the market's really probably has to get above 4300 to convince all the bears out there. A Cantor Fitzgerald guy uh, came out last week. He's still looking for 3400. Uh, and as we talked about last week in Forbes, most of the uh, the average forecast for the S&P at year end is uh, about 100 points above where we are now. So not a lot of bullishness out there. Uh, S&P 500 AD line dropped below its moving average, as I mentioned, held this support, closed positive. The stocks only acted even better, you know, held that support. You know, once we broke about it, that became, was resistance, now became support. And the AD line here looks even stronger, as I showed in that other chart, in a nice zigzag pattern here. So that's all good. Some of the sentiment measures are trying to bottom out. The bullish percentage picked up to 31%. Uh, like to see a strong move above 35%. That would suggest it's going to rally back to 40, 45 or so. Um, the NAAIM, that's the active money managers, become a little more bullish 65 percent you know really needs a strong move above this line three here to suggest that they're jumping into the market uh, it's been pretty much all the last eight months or so they've been pretty low contribution to the market and uh, if the institutions start to get in that will really be a positive sign one indicator I don't show too often is the uh, ARMS index, also known as the trend, developed by my old friend Dick Arms, who had the pleasure of traveling overseas in Asia with about eight stops with him and his lovely wife. You can see it really spiked here at over three. You know, that uh, even though the AD numbers were not, it shows the volume was really coming in on the downside here. So that was an extreme. You get above three on a daily basis, that's a sign the market is really oversold short term. The NYSE advanced minus decline the oscillator, as I mentioned, got up to 1400 so that we're pretty confident we're going to see that pullback, which we definitely did. Got right down to zero and have turned back sharply to close at like plus 600. Lastly, we're heading into big tech earnings this week and you can see the spread. Remember, this is declining values leading when it rallies like it did. Um, you know, in, in April, March, uh, briefly, uh, it means growth is doing better. Looks like growth may be trying to see a, a further rally. It was higher this last week. And uh, overall pattern is still negative, but that doesn't mean it can, can't get back up into this area uh, on a two to three week run um, in favor of growth. As for the futures, um, reverse to negative here on uh, Wednesday so we got short about uh, 39.67 uh, closed out 50% uh, at 3944 closed out another 25% as uh, so we got very close to 3901 and I commented in the alerts that uh, you know that's uh, close enough um, and then the remaining position was stopped out here at 3937 I believe um, we had a positive deviation flip here on price, but it was not confirmed, um, likely to get a confirmed um, buy signal early in the week, 
hopefully we'll get a little pullback here too you can see that there's you know support in the futures 39.75 and then you know further down here there's chart support at around 39.55 to 39.45 after our last video sessions i didn't get nearly as number of questions as i'd hope so send me those questions those questions are the impetus for me to do more live zoom sessions if you're interested in those uh drop me a line at tom at viper report and we'll set one up hope you have a good week in trading i think it's going to be a, a higher market next week and uh, i'll be acting accordingly thank you